on this episode of the Roundtable Podcast, we have the winner. We gave the caddy truck away, and there is some nuggets in this episode. You don't want to miss it, Danny. Yeah, Dalton is a officially a caddy daddy. <laughs> with an eye. With, a, with, with an, an eye. eye. <laughs> yeah, Trey. This is just a banger-ass episode. I mean, we gave away a fucking Cadillac. Like, come on. Yeah, there it is. Tyler. This man's done it. He did the work, and he got it done. Cool. Unbelievably, like, unbelievably, like, super inspiring. Like, it's awesome to have him here. Like, this was sick. Yeah, let's roll the show. Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. Small Arms. Danny at Trey. Speed in the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. Special guest, Tyler C. Lover. And the winner of the I Want Abs 2023 contest, Dalton, is in the house, sitting in front of his new caddy. Hey. Dalton was good. Hey. Yeah, baby. Hey. Man, listen, thousand people. Let, let, I'm gonna let a dead silent for a thousand people, and this guy is the number one winner. Let that set in real quick, Dalton. What you think, kid? Man, it's uh crazy, man, crazy. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit uh, you know, it ain't real, but um. Oh, it's real, kid. <laughs> yeah, next to the caddy, man. It's pretty fucking real. Training with y'all this morning. It's uh amazing, man. He said something when he walked in the gym, and we've all felt like this when we went to West Side or places like this, like when you're in the video. Mm -hmm. Like you watch the video, you've looked up to, you know, certain to some of the guys or myself, and then all of a sudden now we're going set for set. You're walking in the in the building, and it's a reality. So what, what did that feel like this morning? Man, it's crazy because you watch it on your phone, and then you step in, you smell – you know, you smell, smell the old, old school. school. I fuck with that. <laughs> uh, you see it. You see the gym. Like, you see how big it is on camera, but then you walk it. And you, uh, you know, experience it. Super setting with Corey. Uh, unbelievable talking to Small Arms, talking to Cole Susack. I mean, <laughs> and then just walking and getting a tour of the actual, like, the whole setup, man. It's uh, crazy because, like, as, like, me before I, today, I, I didn't really know – like what it looked like you just see the videos but to actually walk it unbelievable man like dreams come true when you execute and really just like go after things so i mean it's it's crazy you said something else to you you said that you um you feel like you know us but you don't know us right yeah. but you do know us yeah so it's like that realization of like wait that's fucking danny and that trey and tyler and cole and like and then you're matching it up and it's like once again to understand that you could put your mind to something being in North Carolina, yeah. that this is not what you do for a living. Not what I do. No. Nope. That you know that you switch that you turn that switch on last year you were in the top twenty five, right? Yes, sir. And then you take it to where your your whole aspiration was the top ten. Yes. And then to get to number one, I couldn't think of a better guy. I'll tell you what, it was close between you and Dane though. So shout out Dane. Dane did a great job. Um, but it was like undeniably like as our panel sat and sat down, we were like Dalton's the winner. Dalton's so involved in everything. He's a lot of the other people on the site look up to you, and like you should be really prideful for your family that you were able to to really express enough discipline in your life to be able to pull this off, bro. Because it's not it's not easy, and uh, especially with your work schedule, which I think we'll get into. Yeah. So, I guess that wasn't really a question; it's more of a statement. But it's just mm -hmm. it's cool. It was cool to just see you interact and then realize because I've been in those moments where I'm like. Oh shit! I'm actually in this motherfucker right now, <laughs> and yeah. this is real. Yeah, this so is anyway, awesome. I don't know. It's just cool. It's cool to be on the other side of it too yeah, for yeah. us. So. so I have a question. So I want to take it all the way back. Like, what inspired you to like partake in this contest? Uh, like, like what was your situation like? Like, how did you feel? What made you want to do this? Yeah. So um, last year, I got top twenty-five. Had really good results. Went on a bulk. Um, and kind of went a little overboard on things. Uh, I kind of got away from AF and gained weight. I saw what I was looking like. I wasn't happy, not having abs, felt kind of bad. I mean, I felt bad. Um, start drooling when I went to sleep. Like, that thing's happened when you gain weight, right? So I was like, man, I got to get my shit back together. Then y'all dropped the Cadillac, and I was like, I, c I can see me driving that, taking my uh, daughter to school when she starts in the fall. So I was like, um, yeah. that's going to be fucking dope, uh, if that happens. So that was my first inspiration. And then just like looking at, uh, what I did last year to this year, I knew I could step it up and get into the top 10, like top 25. Don't get me wrong. I was really happy about last year, but you get nothing for it. Other than saying I was a top 25. I remember messaging G and I was like, um, was this year just different? 
like was the competition just more he said do this like this every year so i was like competition's fucking real you got to bring your a game mm -hmm. well in, in the yep yeah, yeah well i like the visualization piece you guys know i'm big about that so like that's what you saw yeah and think about see the thing about visualization which a lot of people don't realize is when it has a motion tied to it that's so deep it it actually i think makes it more impactful or potentially come true honestly so it was tied to your daughter, yeah. which is obviously about as deep as an emotion you can get, right? Yes. And then that she would be proud of you, probably, even though she's so little, she wouldn't know, but yeah. she will know eventually. And so I, I think there's something to that in whatever world you believe in, that when it's like tied to something that's that strong, that's a good place to start. Yeah. And then that, then that, the things you put around that with the action is what can make this day come true, which is happening right this second. It's pretty cool. It's real cool. So, so how many times have you done the I Want Abs contest now? So this is the second year. Last year was my first year. Um, like I said, I thought I followed all four pillars. I thought I was all in, but I didn't place what I wanted to place. Obviously, top ten, you get something. So like, I uh, I thought I did really good, but then I went back to the drawing board and I said, did I really give max effort? Like, mm -hmm. I did 800 meters, but did I really push it? Corey put a, a video, a little PSA about Travis and how he was pushing it. And how Corey pushed it, and like he was laying on the track. I was like, I've been doing 800 meters, I ain't feeling like that. So I was like, yeah. I need to step my game up. Then I'm looking at like uh, my fat source. I'm eating peanuts, like uh, oven roasted peanuts, very good. But over, I mean, it's easy to overdo them, right? For so sure. I'm the saying, easiest to overdo on those. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, and then I'm looking at the back of the nutrition label, and it's got all this other bullshit in there, right? So I'm like, let me go to avocado. I don't really like avocado, like the texture, don't have a lot of taste. But I said, if that's what's going to give me my results, let me fuck with it. Let me try it out real quick. I right. like that. Fuel. So I fuck, I fuck with that vibe. Yeah. <laughs> so then uh, going back to green beans, like I did that last year, and I stuck with the green beans. I just know I digest them well. They called, uh, they were like, man, I would cook them at uh, work, put them in a the microwave. They're like, man, that's a lot of green beans. I'm like, it is a lot of green beans, but I'm on, like, I have a vision. Like, I had a vision before I started, like, this <laughs> like, year. I'm yoked, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so I've been thinking about putting stuff on the license plate. I might put Del Monte on there, man. Get me a <laughs> fucking spot. We'll put yeah. Del Monte yeah. on that Monte. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> for sure, yeah. Hey, cool. That's good, right? Yeah. That's awesome. He loves vegetables. Well, that's that's, 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 that's me yeah. loves vegetables. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I just had, like, I went back. I listened to uh, the compound effect, like, what you can <clears> do over 12 weeks. Or, like, what you can do over time, small mm -hmm. things how it can affect you, like, positive or negative, right? So I was, like, looking at what I did last year. What can I do smallly, like peanuts to the avocado, like, in one day? You might feel a little bit different, but in 12 weeks, what can happen? Mm -hmm. You do uh, pushing the lunges, what can happen? I did a mile lunges on the weekend. Yes, a mile every fucking weekend, at least nine out of the 12 weeks. I think one week and I did two miles. And that it, could have been literally the difference between first and third. Yeah. Facts. Honestly. I mean, yeah. it was a yeah. mile easy? Fuck no. I mean, it's hard as hell. But, like, I, I saw uh, Dan S. and Brian Johnson. Shout out to y'all. Y'all were doing a mile, and I said, that's where it's at right there. I mean, it sounded hard. I was like, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. So I just stuck with it. And what happened, though, like, doing that mile, I think, like, your lactic acid buildup actually, like, that threshold worked easier. So, like, 800 meters, I was pushing harder. Mm. And I don't know if it's that or the endurance, but whatever it was, it, it like, flipped a switch. So I was hitting 800 meters like I had never hit before, you know what I'm saying? So yep. I think it worked good. I did notice, like, after doing the mile, like, the next two days, I was up in body weight. But I think it's just from all the inflammation. And after the second yep. week, I was like, that's what it is. So mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's, like, knowing that and knowing what you're putting in your body. Um, and then the other thing, too, I was strategically cheating, too, on the weekends. Mm -hmm. So, like, people think they're entitled to bit of fucking tacos on Friday, uh, you know, a big uh, cheat spike on Saturday. Me, I was really strategic. So, I went AF-102, which don't sound like a cheat, but when you're eating green beans and beef, yep. that damn T-bone steak hey, and that He was eating, like, okay. canned green beans, too. Canned this green dude, beans. he's washing them, bro. Like Washing them. Dog, <laughs> that's dog food. You want yeah. that dog food? That's dog food. Tell him, Cole. That's dog. <laughs> Don't hey, washing the green beans, that's like triple they should do the coal vibe, bro. Oh, triple <laughs> rinse man. Get yeah. that salt off. Like, I mean, I was about it. Like, I didn't just say it. I really, like, did it. I did it for 12 weeks. So, yeah, like, yeah. my thing, too, is, like, if you're doing stuff, say me and Trey's doing this contest. Trey's hitting it every day, but one day he's like, man, I don't feel like doing those lunges. He doesn't hit them. Dalton's over here not fucking missing. So, like, you can't catch a day back up. You got 84 fucking days. That's 12 <laughs> weeks. You miss a day, you, you ain't getting that day back. Like, and if you don't miss – 
that uh, momentum you have, it's just compounding where, mm-hmm. like, you start fucking up. Then you think you're a title because you did 800 meter for two days, like, that you get a big cheat. I'm yeah. not fucking up. I have a strategic plan. Like, I executed that plan to give me the best results because at the end of the day, like, last year, I had a little bit of regrets. I was like, what would happen if I didn't eat that fucking tacos on Tuesday or uh, not Tuesday, but, like, Saturday? I was like, instead of doing that, let me stick to this plan here. And I know at the end of the day, like, I gave everything I had, mm-hmm. max effort, like, really gave max effort. Like, if I didn't win, didn't get top ten, I have no regrets. I did everything I could, right? Yep. Yeah, so. you, I mean, you basically answered my question because I was like, what, what was the difference between the first year and the second year, which you <laughs> laid it out because yeah. you internalized everything. Everything. I mean, I looked at everything. I said, what could I do differently than last year? Like, what is the best decision? Like, um, two, like peanut butter. Like, I did peanut butter banana, which is great. Hey, look, at the end of the day, peanut butter, you might get another scoop because it's so Oh, no, good. I'm always getting another scoop yeah. for sure. Everyone does. But when you're in the contest, you, I you went fucking it. coconut oil. Yeah. Coconut oil is nasty. Hey. <laughs> is so is that, <laughs> that ride right there, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, put like, Del Monte on that bitch. Del I Monte. fucking love that, bro. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's so good. Good, Trevon. Okay, so um, so you talked about like in the car ride here, like how you had a lunch streak um last year that you had to miss like because of COVID and everything. Mm-hmm. So like, talk about kind of like the mental like approach that you took that like with the lunges where you were like, okay, like I I messed up my streak. I had some crazy ass streak, but this time I'm not gonna fuck it up. And that's kind of like like you talked about the momentum like that's the momentum then that kind of pushed you into this competition yeah so last year i was at day 449 remember like it was yesterday had covid i pushed through one day the next day i could not do shit like i really couldn't to miss for me to miss a streak it had to be bad right so i couldn't hit my streak i every day after that i kept thinking fucking covid i mean i was really i was like man i was so pissed off so i was like i'm gonna get back to 449 we get 450 mm-hmm. today was 496 I'm getting a 500 in a f- couple of days. I'm going to go to 1,000. So, like, keeping that momentum, like, man, there's days I don't want to do it. My knee's hurting. My hips are tight. Still go out there. It's raining. Go out there. Stow. It's, I'm going out there. There's been a damn hurricane. I still what, go out there. What was the switch where you just said definitively, I just don't me-. – like, I, I know because I'm that way, yeah. right? But But a lot of people don't understand that transition of when it's, like, just what it is. Like, but what – was it just the upsetness of miss of not being in the top ten? Like, what was the shift that said, "This is an absolute now"? Because it's an absolute in my brain. It there, I don't have to make an emotional decision whether I'm going to be at the gym tomorrow. Like, it doesn't ever. Like, I don't get up and go, "Oh, should I?" Like, it doesn't even come close to that. So, but that's what you did, which is why now you get this truck. So it's like, where was that shift and that like decision at? Yeah, so I think uh, just looking at it like how I – if you don't miss that momentum, like you miss one day, you're like, oh, momentum's still going, but you're actually taking back that momentum. So that keeping that streak alive, not only is it good for your – like a streak, keeping it going, but it also like goes to other areas in your life, like going to work. Like you, you do the hard shit. Like I work out in the morning. I get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, I hit my workout. I have like I don't have all damn day to work out, so I have a fixed time to work out. I try to do as much as I can, get as many sets as I can. I go do my lunges, and then I get ready, go to work. I work. 12 he drives hours. an hour of work. Too. Yeah, I work twelve hour shifts. I drive an hour to work, so I get up at three, five, five thirty. I'm getting done with my lunges. I get a shower, get ready, or I have my, pa- my lunch box pack. Yes, I take lunch to work. I'm prepared, right? So I take that. Um, drive an hour, work 12 hours, come back home. That's another hour. That's 14 hours on uh, away from home. Then I try to spend time with my family, whether that's 30 minutes to an hour, go to sleep, do the same thing the next day. So, and that goes to work too. Cause like you think about like me going to work, you got people drinking coffee, trying to wake up. I've been up since three. I'm ready to go. Like I'm focused. I listen to like material on the way to work most of the time and my brain's ready like i'm i'm focused i'm ready to you know get the day started when most people are waking up getting coffee trying to wake up you know that's why you're fucking winning kid <laughs> tyler that was great man yeah it uh, was great so you were talking earlier off camera about you just mentioned spending time with your family but even on if it's your day off where you're gonna be around home a little bit more and you're out there working out in your garage or outside you talk about you know you got a daughter about her waking up and seeing you wanting to come out few of us have kids here we know what that's like they want to be in everything they don't care how focused you are how serious it is they want to be part of it daddy daddy break it down again one more time if you're in the middle of that what do you do to integrate your family and let them see that and not say not right now you know you stay to it but you also integrate your daughter a little bit talk about that yeah so um on my days off so like uh 
our schedule is like a two, two, three. So two days I work, two days I'm off, and then I work the weekend. So the days I'm off, I still get up at 3.30. So I might sleep in 30 more minutes maybe, right? So I work out, and then most of the time, like if I'm lunging, about to lunge, sometimes my daughter wakes up. She knows where Daddy's at. She, he's in the garage or he's out there lunging. So I'll see her, and I'll say, hey, look, Daddy's got his lunges in. Do you want to get on the car? She's got a little tricycle. Um, she's got some other things, too. Or I, do you want to get in the, the stroller? Like, I'm getting my lunges in regardless. So I'll put her in there because uh, people make excuses like, hey, I can't get the lunges in because – my uh, child woke up or can't get the lunges in because of whatever reason. I'm like, I'm going to show you how you can get the mm-hmm. lunges in. So, like, sometimes I'll put it up there. Sometimes I just do it. But I think some, t- sometimes people need to see that. Like, there's no excuse. Like, no matter what, it literally means no matter what, right? Mm-hmm. That's beautiful too, man, because with her, I mean, at such a young age already, you said she's, she's not even in school yet all the way. So she's already a part of that. She's seeing that. And she's mm-hmm. seeing that, th- you know, if she's just not learning something for the first time, she's learning discipline, and it's right from you. Yeah, I mean, I could call her right now and say, Kate, say, uh, knees got to touch or don't count. She knows what that means. <laughs> <laughs> she knows what the ab wheel is. I mean, she loves going out there, and she loves playing around. I mean, obviously, she's three, so we try to be a little careful because it can <laughs> yep. be dangerous, yep. right? But. Man, I pick her up and she wants to do pull-ups. So I mean, it's very awesome. Um, she she knows how to bench press the broomstick I have to do uh, stick twist. So I yeah, mean, it's pretty go. pretty awesome, right? So. Beautiful. Kids do what they see. Now yeah. what you tell them, bro. That's right. At man. the end of the day, so it's like you're setting that example of this is how we operate. This is normal, even though it's abnormal. Yeah. But it's not normal. It's, it's normal at your house. You know what I mean? Yeah. As it is at mine. So it's like, then it's like our kids will get out in the world and then they go. Wait, what I was around was not what's happening out here. You know what I mean? But you're teaching them how to operate, bro. It's just, uh, it's really cool. It's really cool. Back to you, Cole. Yeah, so I guess for someone who's on the fence about doing the contest, like they saw everything that transpired, or even someone who did the contest and didn't get the results they wanted, they're pissed off. What's like, what's the one thing you would tell them? If you are on the fence, like, what do you have to lose? Like, you're in bad shape. You feel bad. Like, what do you have to lose? You operate or, like, start operating, whether it's doing the lunges or doing a hill walk, whatever, like, gets you started. And then you start feeling good. That's creating that momentum. And eventually, like, you'll go, like, further along, and you'll see results you never even thought you could have. And then if you got off the fence, like, get back on them. I mean, start yesterday, but, you know, start today. Like, I mean, most people like to say, I'm going to start Monday. Well, guess what? Monday comes, you don't start, then you say, I'll start next Monday. It just never works. So, like, I have this, uh, saw, I saw this reel the other day. It was a rock. He said, are you day one or one day? And that shit's pretty deep. Like, Ooh. are you day one today or, like, I'm going to do it one day. And then that day comes, I'm going to do it one day. And then you never start. And then you, all you have is, like, that regret of not starting. Like, go ahead and start and create that positive momentum. Are you day one or one day? Shit's hot. Daily shit's fire. fire. Yeah. 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 It's pretty, pretty bad. Quite hot. Yeah. I fuck with that. I, I have that one wrote down. <laughs> okay. For sure. Yeah, I hadn't heard that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a real man. It's a uh, rock did it, man. I saw it one day and I said, I, I, I made a little story and then I found that reel and I shared it back out because I was like, somebody needs to hear that shit, man. Like, cause some people say, man, one day I'll do the lunges. One day I'll work out. One day, one day, and never get, or one day I want to start like my own business. Mm-hmm. Never get started. So like be a day one. Man, there's Let's so many, right there. there's so many uh, things that you've locked on to. Which every winner that's sat in these chairs have locked on to, right? Mm-hmm. But it's like my I, my thing that, I, that burns inside to try to do is how do we get more people? And there is a percentage of people that lock on like this and don't have as good results because maybe they're further away from the result or whatever it is. Like they have to go through the process like it's their second. But it's like I always constantly think about how can I get people to that? Like how can I get them to where they're so focused on – the momentum because when people don't really think like this and I start to say you can create momentum it's almost like they think like I'm fucking talking some voodoo or some shit like what do you mean momentum I'm like well right now you have none so Mm -hmm. whenever things start to go your way because you're you know exercising self-discipline and then you start hitting some green lights like Matthew McConaughey talks about like that's momentum but it's really hard to create so when you're trying to create it, if you give up too early, because you're not no matter what, you're never going to experience it. I've experienced extreme momentum multiple times in my career, and it's unbelievable, but it's really easy to lose. It's really hard to, to, to make move. And somebody explained it to me one time is like, you have a peak like this, and you're on this side, and you're pushing the rock, not the rock, but a rock, hmm. up the hill all by yourself. 
even if people are helping you, but it just feels like the worst sled push of your entire life, constantly. And you want it to be over so much faster than it's supposed to be. But then when you get it to that crest and it rolls over, it's almost like hard to stop, right? And the problem is that time frame is not guaranteed to anybody, even if it'll ever roll over. Are you doing enough? Are you more? Di- are you disciplined enough? Have you strung enough days together? All of it, bro. And I think that that unknown is so hard for people to deal with, and they need to experience it one time. When I experienced one win from the momentum, I was never the same. But I was only like 20 years old when that happened to me, which was the first gym when it for, when it kind of worked, right? And so I think I want that for people so bad. And that's where I created this contest. They needed a time frame. They needed the carrot. And I want them to experience that right there. Because then you can apply it to everything. It's easy to forget, though. It's, it, it's, hard. it's, just, it's just such a hard concept to get people to. And you got there. And it's just like I'm trying to find and get content out of you while you're here to be able to flip that on for more people because I think that's the fucking money. That's that's where it's at. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it not sound psycho, but it is kind of psycho. Yeah. <laughs> Danny? Um, why don't we talk about, um, I mean, maybe you didn't have any low points during this 12 weeks, but, like, what do you do when you hit a low point? Like, meaning, like, when you're lacking motivation, you're kind of, like, starting to question things. Or your Whether, weight stays the same for a couple weeks. Yeah, that starts to kind of play. Maybe it plays mind games on you. Maybe it doesn't. Who knows? But, like, what, what's kind of, like, your, your strategy or what's your advice to somebody that really struggles with that? Yeah, so if you hit up a spot where you're, like, the same weight, what I would say is just stick to the fucking process. You know it's going to work, so just stick to it, and you'll break it or look at what you're doing. Like, can you do a little bit more, like, Say you're not doing 800 meters. Say you're doing 400. Do 800 meters. Do 600 meters. Do something extra or look at what you're eating and, like, maybe make a different change. So, like, I will say one weekend I didn't hit a plateau, but I was, like, kind of the same weight. And I said, let me do the fat loading. I went back to the archives. Mm-hmm. Back to the archives. I said, well, let's look at what Corey did, uh, fat loading. So I actually did that one weekend, and it snapped the shit back in. And I only used it one weekend. Um, but, I mean, I was always looking. and But most of the time my, my stuff was coming down pretty good. But. You got to look at what I was already doing on the weekends, that mile, just doing extra. Because at the end of the day, I was looking at the beginning of the contest. I said, what can I do on the weekend to separate from the pack? Like last year, I probably did what everybody else did, 800 meters every day. I ate the same stuff. Um, You know, ate the same, th- same thing that everybody else probably did. So I was like, what could I do to separate? So that's the couple things I did. I looked at the best fat source, looked at the green beans I knew worked good. And then I was like, what can I do on the weekends that would like push it to a whole nother level? There's also a different level, and most people don't understand this, between lifestyle and contest time. Meaning, some people's lifestyle, eating, which is what I created at, with anabolic fasting, feels like a competition to them, right? Because they didn't eat anywhere close to that. But when I'm in competition, there's not an ounce, like actual competition. Like, I'm going to stand on stage, I'm doing whatever, I'm doing photo shoots, or whatever the shit is. Like, it's a different it's a different level, which is what you deciphered from contest one to contest two. You said 800 still really good. You ate the way you were supposed to. And it gave you this result. This is a different type of vibe whenever you're like, I'm trying to win this motherfucker. So I think that that right there is also people probably need to understand that that's a little different. I got a quote for you real quick. So this is from Tim Grover, Tim Grover. Uh, Everybody wants to win. But in order to know how to win, you have to know how to lose. Last year, I didn't win. So I learned from those mistakes. Yep. I didn't repeat the same thing. I'm going to do it this year. I'm going to do the same thing I did last year. No, I'm going to switch some things up and go harder and really give max effort, like give everything I have. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what I did, man. So I got a quote for you, too. The definition of insanity, do something over and over again yeah. and expect a different result. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, I don't want the top 25 result. I want the caddy. Yeah, I mean, top 25 is great, but yeah. I know I can do more. So, I mean, I wanted to get in the top 10. That was my absolute goal. I like, if I don't get top 10 this year, then it's, it's a fail for me. But, I mean, I'm doing everything I could, right? So. Yeah, it's top awesome. ten. I mean, top twenty-five is good, but uh, top ten, pretty fucking sweet. Yeah. And first place, 
real fucking sweet. Real sweat. <laughs> it's wet. <laughs> wet yeah. uh, so earlier you're talking about how after you knew that you won the competition, even after, even then you were still eating green beans, you're still doing anabolic fasting, and all that kind of stuff. So like, talk about like the importance of not falling off and still continuing on that path. You know what I mean? You already won an Escalade, but it's like you could be eating whatever you want now, and not lunge and not working out. But it's like talk about just the importance of you know keep going. Yeah. So uh, after the contest, most people kind of fell off. I actually stayed with i went to 101.5 i did go to disney for a week and the busy diet had just came out um i was kind of i ain't gonna lie a little skeptical because i was eating 101.5 and i was like burning through his calories so i was like i don't know how a protein shake will fill me up so i uh went to disney wild out for a week mm-hmm. came back at 188 didn't look bad but i knew like now i'm about to start this busy diet and i've been doing that the whole time except for one week i went 102 um, but then, like I was telling G, like I was not I get knocked out by the sweet potato, and I was just as hungry doing that as I was on the busy diet. And the busy diet's been working really good. But for me, I just keep one. I mean, like I know where I'm at now, and I just know if I keep this momentum going, like a year from now, what am I going to look like? Two years and from now, what am I going to look like? What am I going to be benching? What am I going to be squatting? So it's like, just don't settle for like that. That you know, I got good results. Just keep excelling, and then that goes on to other things like work. I was telling y'all. Um, earlier, like work, man, I killed it last year, um, just as well. So I can go everywhere. And then people see that they get inspired and like, uh, you know, winning is very contagious. Like if I see you winning, Hey man, what are you doing over there? Like, what, what are you doing financially? Cause I see you over there, like killing it. You're paying off stuff. Like, what are you doing? How are you operating versus how I'm operating? So it can be very contagious. It's awesome. We need to take a quick break. We're going to do a little commercial. We'll be right back. The Roundtable Podcast is brought to you by Hugh White, Chevy, Buick, and Nissan here at Lancaster and Athens. Mr. Gray, talk to us. Listen, my homie Billy Thaggart, one of the owners down here at Hugh White, is amazing. This is the second year in a row that he has supported the I Want Apps Contest at Max Effort Muscle slash Corey G. If you want to get a car and you're in the local area or you could buy it and get ship it to you, you go check out Hugh White, Chevrolet. What's the website? Visit HughWhite.com. Visit Hugh White. There you go. Back to the show. <laughs> and we're back. That was an amazing commercial, Cole. Yeah, thank nice you. Yeah, shout out, Hugh White. Yeah, All right, Dalton. <laughs> so, now it's real. It's real. You led people down the path. I think people can kind of lock on to the mindset it's going to take for them, really, like you said, transfer over in the life, too, and, and go in. But it's like, now you're going to be here for another day or so. But when you take this truck home, on the drive home, what is it going to mean, and this is something I'm, I'm getting to, you said that you really liked that this year we had things that were established with each with each prize because it, in your mind it would be a reminder, whether it's the watch, whether it's the ice barrel, all the things that we are giving away, the Jordans. It's like talk about every day or when you do drive the truck how that will be. Like you said, ah, if this is if this thing was worth this and somebody offered me double, I wouldn't sell it wouldn't sell it man it means so much more to me the 12 weeks and just looking at it like if say if i get discouraged i don't have that motivation i work out in my garage i open that garage door it's gonna be sitting right there i'm like yeah let's bring it today you know what i mean so yeah, like yeah. for me it means so much and going back to the contest like i think the intangibles touching it like i don't drink but if i won that samuel adams beer keg it'd be going somewhere and every time i saw that i'd be like that 12 weeks yeah so it means a lot i think for me like you get supplements it's cool but like you know, they're kind of go and they're gone. So, like, to have something that you can look, feel, touch, it will remind you. Yeah. You know I mean? so. Yeah, that's really good feedback because that's what we were thinking that would do. But that mm-hmm. that just kind of confirmed it, right, to mm-hmm. me. that That's probably why originally the Rolex did so well yeah. because it's a, an, a reminder. It's an item you can pass down. It's kind of a similar vibe. So, I think that's why. It's pretty cool. Uh, back to you, Tyler. So, break it down a little bit. If it's somebody out there that's, you know, they, they say that they want this, but they just can't see through the other side. Give them some evidence that you've seen about how this discipline, uh, achieving these results both physically and tangible otherwise, about how this can spill over into every other part of your life. If it's the, the clear clarity and focus that you get when you're spending time with your family and you're making memories, if it's at work and your performance, if it's you know improving on more daily habits like consuming that material, learning more if it's financially, if it's not just physical, break some of that down about how it improves every other facet of your life, not just the gym. Yeah, I mean, it proves so. I mean, I don't care if you're really successful in one area. You use those same principles, which is consistency. Having, like, a focus, a plan, and, like, you have a bad relationship, be consistent and, uh, you know, talk to your spouse or whatever your relationship is. 
and you can build that up plus like the lunge and learn you can look like listen to books that will help you relationship wise like being a father it, sometimes it's hard like i've actually listened to podcasts on how to actually like like discipline a, a child in the that right way stuff, yeah, yeah yeah right way because like sometimes you get a little aggravated you might want to like yell but like that's not the best way so you listen to a podcast like about that and it's like let me try this approach and it works it really, really works so like you can do anything and then like as far as works related like same thing like showing up to work early doing hard stuff like doing extra like they need a volunteer be the first one to raise your hand like this small wins that get you that big opportunity you want i mean it's not going to be like oh i volunteered today i'm gonna get a promotion no but you do that over time you stand out in front of your peers so like it mm -hmm. does play very big dividends um i've seen it myself personally like this last year i had the best out uh best review i ever had and um at work i got a five outstanding like that doesn't happen i have the paperwork to show y'all and y'all mm -hmm. can read it if you want to but i mean it, it happened after the contest so i didn't even put it in my thing but it spills over in everything financially how do you get out of debt have a plan be consistent like you know have something and i mean it just works it spills over in every aspect of your one life. of the things I, I love what you said about the lunge and learn and that's how i look at my like personal development whatever's going on in my life that i need to get more insight on i can use that time for so like you know lately i was like on this whole like really trying to like dial in more of my like creativity like to get to that part where i can create some like really awesome stuff or whatever and so that hour that i'm using for my conditioning which because i've been doing a little bit different conditioning but it's the same thing it's like it's like i'm pinpointing those exact things that i need to work on and that's going to change to next month it could be parenting it could be something on marketing it could be so it's like i'm not just blindly listening to stuff I'm listening to a specific thing that's going to contribute to my hopeful success from the consistency that I'm that I'm implementing right this fucking second. And so it's that intentional. You know what I mean? And that's exactly what people should be using it for. And then that's how that momentum continues to go in all aspects because it's not just about the gym. You're like now that's going to spill this discipline is going to spill over to me being a better parent. This discipline is going to spill over to me being more creative. This discipline is going to spill. Like, that is, dude, that's so good. And that's how people should be thinking about that. Um, and, it, and it absolutely works, especially if you time it right. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you're ready to receive the material. It's really cool, man. Yeah. Doing a lot of things right, kid. <laughs> I'm trying, man. I'm trying. <laughs> it's real good. Who's up next? Um, you go ahead, Yeah, I'll, I'll take this. Uh, so... <laughs> You know, obviously, we saw it in the gym this morning. Obviously, you're bricked out now. You got the abs. You're feeling good and everything like that. But I feel like as Colonel of the Arms Army with the general here, how was your arm training? Did your biceps get any bigger, triceps? What was your favorite question, arm workout Cole. that you've done throughout this period? All right, so I'm I'm a big fan of rep progressions. I really love it. Hey. The, 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 oh, the hammer to the regular curl is one of my favorites. <laughs> That's a garage classic. Yeah. Great pump. <laughs> <laughs> then I like doing uh, supersets with like uh, with triceps too. I like the rope. I like going in and out. You know, like that's um, what she said. <laughs> yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey <laughs> layup. Uh, there you go. But anyways, I mean, like <laughs> just, it's great to get good pumps. I mean, like and then just losing weight. You start seeing things you ain't seen in a while. Striations yeah. you ain't never seen. And then bricks. I mean, you know. It's yeah. pretty, pretty nice. Because you know what's crazy is like you talk about building momentum. As soon as you see the bicep vein popping out, that, that makes you want to yeah. get absolutely ripped up because yeah, yeah, yeah. you look yoked yeah yeah 100 he asked me the day today he goes you always this tan or are you you pasty too i go dude i just you just caught me coming off a bunch of vacation stuff like because he's like because yeah. he's lean as crap but he's he's light so it's like pasty, in it and in our gym or with our the way our lighting is it was funny <laughs> but i mean it was like it was fun to be able to go set for set today and like just be in that and know that a lot of the stuff that you're reciting is stuff that we've been trying and proven and been doing for so long all of us right and to see it then spill over to a guy that we don't really know to now we know and then to understand the impact life-wise which is really important to me too because at the end of the day like I love fitness and I know that that's what got me here but if I don't apply these other things I don't think I'm as fulfilled I don't think I have as much success and I just don't think it would feel as right as it does. And that's so when I hear in theory almost like a finished ideal, which is what we've been working on, and it's always ever changing, right? Even to now with the busy diet and these other things, but like the the building blocks of it, if you're willing to commit, will help change your life. That's a fact. 
and you've got to experience that. So for me, being part of the guy putting some of these pieces together, it's really it's really rewarding to hear and to just know that like that's why we got to keep doing what we're doing, man. At the end of the day, we got to have the contest next year. We got to make it better. We got to think of ways to get more people involved because then it gives us an opportunity to potentially create this you know what i mean and that right there is really what it's about bro yeah. so it's just the feedback is is really cool so it's awesome what do you nice got do. what do you got for the Corey g app and g social homies anything yeah man just shout out to all the dogs i had a couple of uh groups that's another thing too last year in the contest i was individual like i had, i followed a few people but i didn't follow a lot of people and then I post a lot pretty much daily my workout. I try to get off my phone for memory storage, and I kind of use it almost as a journaling for me, like how did I hit two reds, one black last week or whatever, last month. And uh, say you get 225, but, like, you look back and see what your form looked like, how fast you were. If you put it on paper, I mean, it's cool, but, like, how was your form? Like, you can go back, like, you might say, hey, I'm not really progressing, but then you go back and you're like, do I got that faster, my form's better, you are progressing, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, I use that sometimes, but – by posting stuff like uh, throughout the year, I started following people like Corey. I was telling Corey like sometimes people tag him, he repost it, and then I kind of see that dog in him too. So I'm like, let me follow this guy. I want to see his stuff because say if I'm not feeling it one day and this guy hits a PR, gets me back motivated, get me back insp inspired, right? So um, we had a couple of different groups. Um, I had a couple of like really close groups that uh man we we're posting uh you know workout what we're doing we we're competing against each other so like i work out by myself most of the time so i know y'all have a gym y'all compete well i was competing against those guys we kind of lift the same thing so i say hey man this guy right here got 225 on bench for five i got 215 for four right and they bring it next week or you know whatever the case may be so like having that competitive edge with somebody it pushes you to a whole nother level that like uh, according like like I, I usually push myself pretty good, but, like, going that extra level competing made a big difference, too. So that was one of the other things that really brought, like, uh, me to the next level, I think. For sure. For sure. It's almost like your expectation just really changed for yourself, and you were looking for those because yeah. you knew that would contribute to the long-term result. Like, I'm not going to lie, in my career, if I felt like I was, like, kind of just hanging out, I'm I'm, like, trying to find ways to, like – you know, have it in front of me more, have a challenge, chase somebody else. Like, you know, you have to play those games. Once again, I think some people think it's kind of hokey, but you know yourself and you know the way your mind works. And it's like, if I got that, that person's beating me, it's going to make me feel different about pushing on my own specifically. So it's like, I think people need to continue to search for those type of things. You came into my office and you saw that wall of all those pictures. Every time I look at that, it motivates me because yeah. it's all these different people that have motivated me over time. And it's like, you need all of that stuff. I'm like one of the most motivated people you're ever going to meet in your life, but I still need all of it. I still need the books. I still need the pictures. I still need the reminders. I still need the things in front of me every day to keep me pushing like that. Like it doesn't go away. Like it's, it's always needed. And I think maybe sometimes people are tired of doing that. But if you want to continue to progress, you have to keep putting things in front of you that are gonna are gonna remind you to keep pushing. So it's like you did that really well this time too, and you and you'll have and I would advise to continue to keep looking for that so it'll keep pushing you. You know, it's it's yeah. really important, I think, ultimately to success. For sure. Uh, we'll get one more from Trey, one more from Tyler. Um, how excited are you to take your daughter to school in this? Dude, this was pretty epic. So, like, when I first saw the Cadillac, like, last year it was a Mercedes. Mercedes is pretty nice, but for me, having a family, I was telling you all earlier, I have a Honda Civic now. I usually don't drive it with my daughter because putting her in the back seat is kind of a hassle, but, dude, the Cadillac's going to be fucking sweet. You know what I'm uh, saying? So, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I actually visioned me driving down the town, having her back there, and then after that vision, I kind of, like, you know, stored it, and it was, like, time to get to work. So, like, now that's a reality. Dude, it's going to be epic. Got the DVD player, like – she can watch whatever she wants in there. I mean, it's gonna be pretty cool. So, so cool, Tyler. This thing's pretty clean. So, I mean, after an eight-hour drive, you might have to wash it one more time. But what's the first thing you're gonna do with this? You are gonna put a system in there? You a window tent guy? Which <laughs> I don't know, man. That's a good question. Um, I need to see how the dark the tent is now. Um, a system would be pretty cool, but we're probably gonna take this on vacation, man. This is gonna be right. like the vacation mobile here, baby. Yeah. So, very good. Um. It's going to be more of a family-oriented. Uh, I done told my wife, my daughter, like, when I get home tomorrow, they're getting a drive. I mean, we're okay. going to get in it. We're going to put yeah. a car seat in there. We're going to take them on a drive. So, um, then I'm going to take it to work Sunday. I go back to work Sunday and uh, just show everybody at work. They want to look at it. They want to see it. 
and then just cool. show like what happens when you stay consistent. Yeah. So that's great, man. I really that's like sick. the Del Monte license plate, bro. It's you pretty should sick, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got a, good, a couple good ones. Yeah, Del Monte good is uh, pretty good because uh, people are uh, gonna ask about that like a hundred percent. But it was always like, man, that's a lot of green beans, and I was like, yeah, it is. But I mean, <laughs> I gotta fuel fruits. my body. Yeah. I gotta I stay full, and like green beans is that is that for me? So uh, <laughs> Del Monte, love it. It's so good. <laughs> Well, we're going to wrap it up. Is there anything you want to share um, as, as you kind of part uh, here with this podcast and just uh, anything for anybody listening that, you know, is trying to get motivated or just kind of your parting shots with, with the show? Yeah, so um, I think for me, uh, you never know who's watching you, man. So, I, like I said, I post stuff all the time on my Instagram. Um, I might inspire somebody. They'll message me. And, I mean, I see their progression, which actually inspires me back, and it just keeps me going forward. But not only can you inspire people on, like, Instagram, but, like, people at work, I can inspire them. Um, I have a bunch of people, like, start losing weight, trying to get involved. They might not do the lunges. They might not do uh, Corey G, but they are starting. So sometimes that's that's awesome to see because they're taking a hold of their health. Um, and then that kind of spills over to, like, work, being productive and stuff. So, like, people are always watching you. So just remember that. Um, they, they see you winning. It's contagious, like I said earlier. They want to start like feeling that way, start winning themselves. So, um, it's pretty awesome. Man, that's a great way to wrap right there. I'm your boy Corey G, Small Arms Danny, at Trey Speed and the Graphic Gangster himself, Cole Susak. For Tyler C. Lover and Dalton, the winner, we are out. <laughs>